welcome to another edition of Talkline. I'm Zev Brenner coming to you from the Kennedy Caucus Room on Capitol Hill, paying tribute to members of Congress, both Republican and Democrat, who have been supportive of Israel, especially for the Iron Dome. And this is the Iron Dome Congressional Tribute. We'll be right back with some very special interviews and special highlights right after these messages. Stay tuned. If you have diabetes and love food, pay attention to this free offer. Hi, I'm Nicole Johnson, Miss America 1999. I've had diabetes since 1993, and I hate boring food. Well, I got these three free cookbooks with fantastic tasting recipes for people with diabetes. If you have diabetes and have Medicare, you can get these cookbooks free. Call now to qualify for not one, not two, but three free cookbooks. Call 1-800-753-6314. You'll love this rich chocolate cake, oven fried chicken, and nachos. You'll also get this free meal planning guide and diabetes magazine. So call now for your free Better Care Kit with three free cookbooks. To qualify, call 1-800-753-6314. That's 1-800-753-6314. An important alert for people using the drug Avandia. The diabetes drug Avandia has been linked to serious heart-related injury and even death. If you or a loved one used Avandia and suffered a heart attack, heart failure, stroke, or heart-related death, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 1-800-460-5950. Recent congressional reports and FDA studies have found an increased risk of heart attacks and heart failure in patients using the drug Avandia. Time to file a claim is limited. Call 1-800-460-5950. Back to the program, I'm Zev Brenner, coming to you from the Iron Dome Congressional Tribute on Capitol Hill. I'd like to introduce our Master of Ceremonies this afternoon, the legendary Phil Rosen. Please give him a warm hand of welcome. Thank you very much. First of all, um, I'm honored to be here. Um, in this crowd and with all these notable people. The, the one person I want to point out who's here, um, who is the man responsible for the creation, or one of the people responsible for the creation of that wonderful Iron Dome, Azarel Ram from Raphael is here with us. That's the Israeli company that created it. And a round of applause. Mo'od todarabah, thank you very much. Thanks for everything you do for Israel and for the United States of America. Bobby Rechnitz is, uh, is a true leader of the Jewish community. Um, he has done an enormous amount, and if I was to list all of his, the details of what he's done for us as Jews and for Israel, um, we'd be here forever and no congressman or senator would speak. Um, he is the chairman of this event. He's the founder of a company called Bomel Companies and Bomel Israel. He's developing a beautiful project that I just passed by on, uh, on Friday in, uh, in, in Jerusalem. Um, he's a developer, he's a uh, uh, entrepreneur, he's also a philanthropist, um, but more than that, he's a good friend to so many, so many people um, in Israel and, uh, and the Jewish community, and he's done so much to help us I introduce Bobby Rechnitz. I stand before you as a proud American in paying tribute to our great country, the United States of America, whose anthem pledges liberty and justice for all. We gather here today in unity as a nonpartisan group who has no agenda but to show gratitude to our country for showing unbridled military support for its only trustworthy and close ally in the Middle East, the State of Israel. I'd like to share a short story with you that identifies Israel's appreciation of the Iron Dome in the most personal way. Netanel Moshevili, 21 years old, was killed in the IDF nine months ago while fighting a group of terrorists on the Gaza border trying to prevent their infiltration into Israel. After Operation Pillar of Smoke, Netanel's surviving father mother and five brothers and sisters who live in Ashkelon went to the Iron Dome facility protecting their city. Together with 50 other family members who lost loved ones to terror, the One Family Fund, caring for all of Israel's victims of terror, 
sponsored the event for them to thank the soldiers for their successful operation of the Iron Dome system during the eight-day operation. At the Iron Dome facility, Netanel's bereaved father, Jacob, spoke on behalf of all the victims of terror who were there. We came here today, those of us who have already felt the pain of death within our families, to thank you, the vigilant operators of the Iron Dome system, for protecting our families and all the residents of Ashkelon from the many missiles that would have otherwise fallen upon us and exploded in our homes and businesses. The Iron Dome system and your cunning operating skills literally saved thousands of lives and protected all of us gathered here from the unbearable pain of losing a second or third child to enemy fire. The commander of the Iron Dome facility who attended the gathering spoke to his 100 soldiers manning the Iron Dome unit protecting Ashkelon. He said afterwards, don't pat yourselves on the back for your excellent performance during Operation Pillar of Smoke. This one was easy. All the missiles were coming from only one direction, from Gaza. The next time, which is not far off, the missiles could be coming at us from every direction, from all sides. To meet that challenge, you have to keep practicing and honing your skills. My friends, we are all here to give thanks to our government, the United States of America. May liberty and justice prevail. Thank you. We're in the Kennedy Caucus from Capitol Hill. What a wonderful program to support the Iron Dome. We're talking about the Iron Dome Congressional Tribute. On my right, Jonah Reckman, he's a co-chair of the Tribute Committee. His father, Rob Reckman, is the one who was chair, who put it all together. How did this all come about? Um, my father had the idea to show the American government that Israel appreciates everything they do for them, the idea of Hakara Tatov, that we should be grateful for friends and supporters, and it was very important to him to show a Jewish contingency to come down to Capitol Hill to show our gratitude. You know, that's one word that's something we're missing in our vocabulary is gratitude. And such an important thing is not just to say we need your help, but to say thank you afterwards. And I think it's a wonderful thing to do because, as it's proven, the Iron Dome has saved so many lives in Israel. It's going to save more lives all over the world. So it's such an important thing. And this is a great way of saying thank you. I agree. In 2006, I chaired the terrorism subcommittee. And so in August, during the, the uh, second Lebanon war, I had an opportunity to go to Israel and go out to Haifa to see what was happening in neighborhoods there. And actually, at one point, while I was doing an interview or shortly thereafter with the BBC, the rockets began to rain down and we had to go into a bunker. I went to the trauma hospital. I saw 600 victims there. Haifa had been under assault for several weeks at that point. I tried to get members of the media, the BBC, the CNN, to go down there and to interview those victims. And one of the uh, BBC reporters told me, no, my editor felt that wouldn't be balanced. I said, not balanced. I've been watching your coverage. Any, if anything, the real question is how you can even purport to be reporting the news because what is actually happening inside Haifa is not being told. The targeting of civilians, the targeting of the hospital, and at that time, Israel had no defense. And so Israel decided to take action and construct the Iron Dome. The first two batteries were done by Israel. Subsequently, the United States were able to assist with eight additional batteries. But we have much more work to be done on this because during the period of time when I was there, some 4,000 rockets came down, and Katusha came down on Israel. We had an opportunity, of course, in November to see the effectiveness. I wasn't there in November, but we could all watch on television the effectiveness, the 90% effectiveness of the Iron Dome. So before us, we have the ability to expand that program to get new interceptors today, to get new batteries deployed, and at the same time to look also at Israel's qualitative military edge. And in April, I am leading a delegation 
along with uh, APAC's Educational Foundation, to Israel to look at exactly this issue, which was what we were able to do in 06, to meet with intelligence officials, with Mossad, with those in the government to discuss what we do going forward to assure the security of our ally Israel. There is a commemorative Iron Dome medal, which was just minted in Israel, presented to Representative Ed Royce as an expression of gratitude for the countless lives saved by the revolutionary Iron Dome anti-missile defense systems, Iron Dome Conditional Crib Tribute, February 27, 2013. Bobby Rechnitz joins us, a philanthropist from California. He is chairman of the Iron Dome Congressional Tribute. We're actually standing here in Congress and Kennedy Caucus Room where we have a wonderful event to celebrate the Iron Dome and the American support for it. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So I should say thank you for putting this all together. How did it all come about that you have congressmen, senators from both sides of the aisles working together, being here, and you're saying thank you to them? Well, for years I've been uh, I'm the founder and chairman of the Jerusalem Conference, which um, we ended about two or three years ago. And uh, the Jerusalem Conference is uh, a, uh, an Israeli-based conference, but we also had an annual conference here at the Senate Building in Washington. We gave it a break for a couple of years. And then uh, when the Art and Dome <coughs> became uh, as evident as it did and got the support of the Congress and the President, and especially uh, the late Senator Daniel Anuya, who did so much for it, we need to show support and to say thank you because we often criticize uh, in the political system we're free to criticize in a democratic system congress people uh, representatives senators the president we all have our views but at the end of the day the strategic military cooperation between the united states and israel has never been stronger and for that we have to give thanks to the united states of america for protecting israel are you going to have more events such as this uh, we're going to have some more events in Israel. I don't know if we're going to do more than one annual event, but we're always going to find one way or another, one reason to show our support and our thanks to Congress on the congressional level. Although we do have a White House briefing this afternoon, the guests are invited to the White House. This is mainly to reach out to the congressional level so that they build a connection and a kesher to the ministers and the members of Knesset in Israel. The upper levels will always have their connection. But when you bring people together on the legislative level, we think that that's so important for Israel and for the United States and to continue to build the strategic cooperation. We're going to be right back with our very special broadcast originating from the Iron Dome Congressional Tribute on Capitol Hill right after these messages. Stay tuned. Holly's discovered a secret that can help thousands of other catheter users. For years, I never realized how different catheter supplies really were. Like thousands of Liberator customers nationwide, Holly discovered the big difference Liberator makes with a wide range of personal services, unlike other catheter suppliers. Liberator Medical saves you money. Liberator contacted my doctor and made arrangements for me to try catheters that were easier to use, much more comfortable, all for free. And they helped me qualify for a new sterile catheter every time I needed one, no more reusing. We work with your doctor, insurance, and Medicare. We handle all the paperwork and billing. There's free shipping for little or no out-of-pocket costs. If you or someone you care for uses catheters, call today. See what makes Liberator so different and for little or no out-of-pocket costs. The minute you make the phone call, you're going to see the difference. Call 1-800-628-2454. 1-800-628-2454. Are you stressed over credit cards and other debts, maybe through no fault of your own? Imagine how it would feel to have that weight lifted right off your shoulders. Well, here's some good news from America's trusted name in debt relief. Care One providers have already helped over four and a half million people in debt, and we can help you today. Just call this toll-free number to speak with a friendly representative, and in just minutes, you'll get your free debt relief analysis. Just call the toll-free number today. I've been making credit card payments for years, but the balance never seems to go down. Well, no matter how high your debts are, at Jordan McKenna, we're not here to judge you. We're here to help you. We'll match you with a reputable law firm who will negotiate and reduce your credit card balances. Stop those harassing collection calls. They'll even design an affordable monthly payment plan that fits your budget. You can save thousands of dollars. Call Jordan McKenna right now for a no-obligation consultation. It's that easy. Call today, 888-685-1433. Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner coming to you from the Iron Dome Congressional Tribute on Capitol Hill.
Lieutenant Colonel Ilana Frieda is with us 22 years in the Israeli army. She's worked in the Pentagon. She lived near the Lebanese border, so she witnessed firsthand what it's like to have missiles raining down without the Iron Dome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, my experience, I grew up I, uh, on the Lebanon border as a kid. We spent, I spent most of my life in the shelters, running from class, from home, in the middle of the night, all day long to the shelters. The only, the only difference was we didn't have the Iron Dome, so we were lucky if we made it. It was um, really a different experience to see the kids. It's still, you know, 50 years later, still the kids in Israel are under attack. Uh, the only difference is that they have the Iron Dome, and this uh, at least makes them more safe than we were. And thank you, and we appreciate it. No, so but you're saying such a difference today knowing you have an Iron Dome when you, you wish you had it when you were a kid. I wish, yeah, that was a long time ago. Uh, at least they have it now, as they said. Uh, when I grew up, you know, for me it was like the right direction. I uh, joined the military like anybody else in Israel when I was 18. The difference was I, w I spent 22 years in the military. What did you do for 22 years in the army? Um, I can tell that uh, some of my position, I ran the chief of staff office for seven years. I was here in Washington for two years, appointed to the Pentagon, like uh, deputy de defense attaché in Washington, D.C. And, you know, I'm doing everything I can to, to help. Do you miss not being in the Army now? I will always miss it. It's a, it's a feeling that every day you do uh, something important, not for yourself, but for your country. And I don't think you can have this feeling anywhere else. Israel lives in a very unwelcoming neighborhood, a very hostile neighborhood, a neighborhood in which even the more progressive and moderate countries in the neighborhood will not even put the name of Israel on their map. It's a reality that you and I know and that we have to live with. And we know what a dangerous situation Israel is in. That is why I am proud to stand with this list of members of the House and Senate today and express my past support and my continuing support for Iron Dome. Dan and Oli realized the importance of Iron Dome, and I'm so glad we're, we are introducing him today. I don't know if you know, on Wednesday mornings, the Senate has an ecumenical prayer breakfast. This morning, we had Jews there, we had Baptists, we had Methodists, we had Mormons. It is ecumenical in every way, and we meet on Wednesday mornings. The last speech I heard Dan and Owe make was in July of 2012 at the Senate prayer breakfast. We had a fabulous trip to, uh, to Israel. It's my first time to go to Israel, and my wife and two of my sons went. We had a whole bus, and we sang songs on the bus. I mean, we really had a good time. I even uh, sang Hebrew songs, but I didn't understand what I was singing, you know. But uh, we had a great Shabbat uh, with uh, Dr. Rich Roberts invited us to his Shabbat. And he had a lot of young men that had been to the yeshivas there in, in Jerusalem, and they danced and sang, and it was a, it was it was like uh, something from a different world I had never experienced before. We went to the Sea of Galilee and sailed across the Sea of Galilee, and uh, you know there are stories of sudden storms popping up on the Sea of Galilee. We experienced it all. We started out in the sunshine, then we experienced rain, then we experienced hail. Then we experienced sleet, and then the sun came out again, and we were on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and we saw a double rainbow, full double rainbow on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. So it was really uh, spectacular. Uh, we traveled down into Jerusalem. I went over into Jordan, met with the King of Jordan. I traveled up into the West Bank area. And I always think that there are solutions to problems. I'm a physician, so I went over hoping that I would come back, and today I could tell you the solution to finding peace in the Middle East. Uh, I'm also an honest person, so I'm going to tell you I didn't find ultimately the answer to peace. But I think there's incremental ways to peace. When I talked with Mahmoud Abbas, I asked him, is peace or is any kind of progress in peace, does it include one solution with uh, the Gaza Strip and the West Bank and Israel making one solution? He said yes. And when I ask those in Israel, they, they say essentially yes, maybe not as firmly, but they're both saying yes. So uh, my point though is that how do you move forward when you have people running the Gaza Strip that people aren't willing, you know, that don't believe are reliable people to negotiate with? 
So there is no path forward with two different governments, one in the West Bank and one in Gaza. And so my point is, is that maybe if there's an impasse, we look for incremental ways to move forward. And I think uh, trade is one. I noticed that like our bus, we didn't stop in Bethlehem, although they say buses do stop in Bethlehem. Tourism, money, ways that you can get money into the West Bank, into Gaza, that allow more economic prosperity makes people less likely to fight. And so I spoke with that with the Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu when I met with him. Didn't come up with any ultimate solutions, but I don't think anybody disagrees that if there's a way to increase economic prosperity for all, it makes people less likely to fight. I don't know what the ultimate solutions for all of the other things. I did come away saying that even though America is a great friend of Israel, I don't think it's our job to dictate every bit of minutia to Israeli policy. I met with the mayor of Jerusalem and he shows me a map where they want to build neighborhoods and I don't see it to be the business of American politicians to go to Israel and say, no, you shouldn't build here, you should build here. So I do believe in sovereignty. I am the son of immigrants. My parents, both Holocaust survivors from Poland. I'm a very lucky guy. I was born in the United States, in Brooklyn, New York, the greatest country in the world. And as I stand here today, I really don't take that for granted. My parents, being extra sensitive, raised me, taught me that there is good and there is evil in our world. And it has nothing to do with our religions or our race. Israel, our friend, the Jewish state, was born from the ashes of the Holocaust. Israel is our ally, our true ally in the Middle East. Israel shares those same values that make us Americans the most wonderful and special country in the world. There is not a day that goes by that I don't thank God for our good fortune to be born in uh, the United States, in our great country. Um, without the support of the United States, Israel would have a very, very tough time in defending itself. Uh, it's really our only true ally in the Middle East, and we share so many values to be part of a project which could defend the state of Israel, a defensive weapon which has proven to be uh, so uh, important, especially for the citizens of Israel, I think is one of the most uh, wonderful things we could do. It's proven itself. And as it says in the scriptures, if you save one soul, it's like you save the whole nation. And I think with the Iron Dome, uh, thanks to the help from the United States and the Israeli uh, ingenuity, we created something that saved many, many lives, and only God knows how many lives we'll end up saving in the future. It's been my pleasure to work on recognition of those who helped end the Holocaust, bring about the State of Israel in 1948, and work together in our enduring partnership that we have today. I was pleased last year to work with Senator Boxer from California to pass the Enhanced Security Act between the United States and Israel to enhance our security and our cooperation for the State of Israel and their people. But you're doing the right thing today to honor Dan in a way. And I'm so glad to know his wife Irene and his son Ken are here today. They deserve great credit because without Dan in a way, Iron Dome would not exist. You see, the State of Israel is defended not only by an Iron Dome covering her, but also by a solid rock mountain separating her from her enemies. That rock is Senator James Mountain Inhofe. As a ranking member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, Senator Inhofe has been a consistent and courageous supporter of the State of Israel. In 2002, Senator Inhofe delivered a remarkable speech on the floor of the Senate. Remarkable because it was clear, it was bold, and it was selfless. The speech was called Seven Reasons to Support Israel. And the reasons listed by Senator Inhofe serve as the essence of the special relationship between the United States 
and Israel. A lot of people out there think that we are the, re, uh, the ones who are giving all the stuff uh, to Israel, and you heard a lot of the things during the last three days, the last, I guess, couple of weeks it's been now, uh, and that's not true at all. And there's a, no better example than the Iron Dome, because that's their, your technology that came to us, and we're going to be in a position to use it. Uh, I'm pushing the effort, and I know there's some opposition to this, to making this now a joint use uh, type of uh, equipment, since our interests are all exactly the same, and I'm going to make sure that they stay there. I'm so happy to be here today to show the support for uh, the Iron Dome missile defense system, and also to pay tribute to uh, a great uh, uh, staunch defender of Israel, uh, our late Senator uh, Dan Inouye. And I know that he would be quite pleased uh, if he would see uh, so many uh, members of Congress, so many senators here, and so many of you uh, coming out here to uh, show your support as well. Well, as we saw last November, Iron Dome significantly helped protect Israel, counter hundreds of rockets and missiles that were indiscriminately fired by Hamas on innocent uh, civilians. And that is why I am pleased to tell you that along with my uh, Democratic colleague, Congresswoman uh, Susan uh, Davis of California, we will be introducing the Iron Dome Support Act, which will authorize further assistance to Israel for Iron Dome anti-missile defense system as a whole. Now, Thank you. Now, this bill will reinforce uh, America's longstanding commitment to the Israeli people. It will send a crystal clear message to the world that our nation stands with our allies and unequivocally supports uh, the democratic Jewish state of Israel. It is a testament to just how important the United States views its relationship with our ally. My name is Emil Fish, and um, it's a great pleasure to introduce my own congressman from Pasadena, California. And besides my formal speech, I got to tell you, this guy's a great man. Several weeks ago, when I was in Israel for meetings with the Prime Minister and other senior officials, I had the opportunity to visit one of the Israeli air defense facilities and receive an outstanding brief on the country's multi-layer defenses including Iron Dome and other missile defense systems to protect the country from Hamas, Hezbollah, and indeed Iranian ballistic missiles. I came away from that visit and briefing more determined than ever to see to it that Israelis are given the resources and help they need to protect themselves from a multitude of threats. I reiterate that pledge today as a member of the State and Foreign Operations Appropriations Subcommittee. Was a, a reserve officer serving in what would become known as the Second Lebanon War. I'll never forget um, hearing the siren outside of the Israeli town of Rosh Pina. It's a beautiful town nestled in the hills of the Upper Galilee, one of the first Zionist settlements in the Upper Galilee. You can see the Sea of Galilee from there. And the siren goes off, and my unit and I, we take cover behind some rocks, and we watched as wave after wave of Kadusha rockets hits this beautiful town. And there was a forest there planted by Jewish donations from around the world over the course of the last hundred years. That forest immediately went up in flames. And the people of Rosh Pina, some of them had to be evacuated. Struck by the whole northern part of Israel, Haifa northward, was struck by about 4,000 rockets during the course of that war. And we're sitting behind these rocks and we're saying to ourselves, this is the state of Israel. Don't we have an answer for this? Is it possible that after struggling through so many wars, we're coming back to our ancient homeland after 2,000 years, we are going to be cowered by thousands of rockets fired by terrorists. And yet, two years later, I was back in that different uniform, this time serving in the South, where another 4,000 rockets had hit Israel over the course of, say, 2000 to 2008 and 2009. Uh, millions of Israelis had come under rocket fire during that period. Uh, about 50 people had been killed, a quarter of a million people displaced, and we didn't have an answer. That same feeling. Here we are, the Israel Defense Forces. We don't have an answer to this. And then Israel came up with an answer. In world-breaking record time, between 2007 uh, and just over three years later, Israel developed the Iron Dome system. It went from drawing board to active deployment in that period. And then, 
it became the first anti-ballistic system in history. Now, there are anti-ballistic systems around the world. It became the first anti-ballistic system in history to prove effective in combat. Now, this is quite literally rocket science. This is getting a missile to hit another missile in midair. And not only does it do that and do that effectively, but within a split second, the Iron Dome system makes an assessment of the trajectory of the incoming round and will discern whether that is going to hit in a populated area or it's going to hit in an open field or in the ocean. If it's going to a populated area, we shoot at it and with 85% success rate, we take them down. We take them down. That is a world record. Extraordinary. right back with our very special broadcast originating from the Iron Dome Congressional Tribute on Capitol Hill right after these messages. Stay tuned. Kosher Expeditions provides unique activity-based tour vacations with delicious Glot Kosher cuisine cooked fresh on site to over 30 of the world's most exotic destinations, including Costa Rica, the Canadian Rockies, Spain, and African Safari. Relax at our seven-year running Passover holiday adventure located at our Kosher Lebesov Luxury Beachside Resort in Costa Rica. Enjoy breathtaking ocean views surrounded by exotic wildlife on an all-inclusive Pesach vacation that includes inspiring lectures, children's programming, and exciting Costa Rican adventure tours during Colomoy. Kosher Expeditions operates year-round tours, offering all-inclusive travel programs to custom and private groups, students, camps, young adults, and regularly scheduled departures. Come tour with the most established kosher tour operator since 1994. Call Kosher Expeditions at 877-JT-KOSHER or visit them online at kosherexpeditions.com, the source for exciting worldwide kosher adventure. Are you in business, a store owner, wholesaler, or manufacturer? Do you know you may be eligible for free television and radio advertising? Millions of dollars are lost every year by businesses not taking advantage of free radio and television advertising. Don't lose out. Advertising is the lifeline of any business, large or small. For free consultation, call us in the New York area, 212-769-1925, out of New York, 866-MY-TV-SHOW. Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner, coming to you from the Iron Dome Congressional Tribute on Capitol Hill. Ken Inouye joined us, the son of the late Senator Daniel Inouye. This special Iron Dome Congressional Tribute is also paying tribute to Senator Inouye, who I had the pleasure of meeting 20-some five years ago when I was in Hawaii for a Passover holiday. Good to have you here. Thank you for joining us. And your father, your dad, was a wonderful senator and also a big supporter of Israel. Uh, indeed. He had, uh, quite frankly, as, as we say in, in Hawaii, he had a lot of aloha for, for the people. So, indeed. Are you going to follow his footsteps in politics? <laughs> I take one day at a time. Right now, uh, my, my primary concern right now is to uh, make sure that my daughter, his granddaughter, she's about to turn three, that as she grows up, she uh, knows who grandfather was. That's my main goal. Quite, quite she had frankly. some insight. And I, I met him. He, he was a wonderful advocate for the United States, for the strong Israel-American relationship, served many years in the Senate. Give us some cute stories or insights into your late father? The funniest uh, story I can think of just off the top of my head was um, we used to go see a lot of martial arts films when I was grow growing up and here in the Washington DC area basically anytime you'd be going to, s when I was a kid anytime you'd be going to see a martial arts film it was in a pretty bad neighborhood and I don't know if you know this about um, DC at that time in history but there were, whenever you went to a theater like that, there were always groups of guys that sat in the theater the whole time, and their job was to shake down the customers in there by intimidating them and getting them to get, their, get money from them through threatening them. And one guy came up and tried to do that to my dad, and I'm sitting next to him, and the guy is saying, you know, I see you here with your son. I'd hate to see anything bad happen to, you, to either of you, and I can help keep something bad from happening to you but if you don't help me out with some money I can't guarantee you guys are gonna walk out of here and my dad just looks at him and says you know I appreciate you taking the time to introduce yourself I appreciate you taking the time to tell us of your services however we won't be needing your services at this time but should circumstances change, I'll come looking for you. 
And the guy just looks at me, looks at my dad, looks at me again, and leaves. Because he's not sensing any fear from the guy. And um, I guess the point of that is, it's funny, it's a funny story, but the point of that is, is that, you know, he was a real hero. He was, he, he was the real deal. He was not afraid of anything. Even, even some, some, you know, wannabe thug whose job it was to shake down people. <laughs> No, and he certainly stood firm, and he was strong in his commitments, and which is wonderful. And he was able to accomplish quite a bit. In indeed. Tremendous indeed. amount. And I'm sure it must have been into growing up with all kinds of elected officials and high-ranking diplomats uh, constantly being in your sphere. Yeah, I mean, although, candidly, when I, was, when I was younger, I didn't necessarily know who they were other than that. You know, my, my folks were always very low-key about everything. It was always presented as, oh, this gentleman works with your father. And, you know, so <laughs> I'd meet this guy that worked with my father. <laughs> you know? And I remember one time um, when I was a child, we, you know, he managed to get it so that the family visited the president, President Johnson. I was, at the time, I was three. And um, at the time, all I knew was this was, this was a very big man with a very strong voice who, behind his desk, had this button that if he pushed the button, someone would come in to give him soda. And as a small child, I thought that was the neatest thing in the world. As I got older, I realized who this guy was and that there was a lot more to, to going on there than him being able to get a soda by pressing a button. But, you know, you're three years old. That's what you're thinking. <laughs> Very impressive. Anyway, thank you for sharing the memories, and we want to thank you and your family for what they've done to strengthen the strong America and also secure Israel. Thank you. Thank you. It's very humbling to hear this. Grandson Ken, who is here, joins me in, in really a heartfelt thank you to all of you who are here and from the many messages that we received shortly after Dan's passing. In fact, Prime, in fact, Prime Minister Netanyahu was among the first of the foreign leaders to personally call and to extend his um, condolences and to express his um, appreciation for the longtime friendship that Dan had with people of um, Israel. Dan always felt a very special a connection to your country, as you know. In fact, as the ambassador said, the trip that we took to Israel was a very memorable one, and one of the last, and was one of the last uh, congressional trips that, that he made. And he spent that time talking to the prime minister, to the members of the uh, defense, about the missile defense systems and the importance of ensuring that there would be strong bond, a strong defense um, between our two countries. That bond bet uh, between um, Israel with him began as he was um, in the Army Hospital following World War II. He was wounded in Italy and he spent nearly two years in a hospital. And in that time he met a young soldier who was, who was wounded and who uh, came to the bed next to him. And the soldier told Dan about the concentration camps and about how he had seen bodies stacked like cordwood. And Dan did not understand, he was not a familiar, so he asked the soldier, what have these people done to uh, deserve such a fate? And the soldier said, they were Jews, you know that nobody likes Jews. And Dan was stunned, he could not believe it. And then he spent the rest of his life learning about and making a commitment that he would always strand, stand strong with Israel. Irene Inouye joined us, the husband, the late husband was the great Senator Dan Inouye of Hawaii, and thank you for being here as part of this tribute today, is for your husband's uh, help uh, supporting Israel. And I had the pleasure of interviewing when I was in Hawaii about 20 some years, good to see you. Thank you, thank you, it's very nice to be here. I know your, your husband was a strong advocate for America, a strong advocate for Israel. Uh, he, he was terrific what he did for our country, what he did for the strong Israel-United States relationship. Some behind the scenes you want to share with us? Well, this was an important relationship. In fact, the last international trip we took as part of a congressional delegation was to um, Israel. And uh, he believed that the uh, self-defense of Israel was extremely important and worked hard to ensure the strong relationship between the two countries. Your son can share with us that how he was not afraid of anybody, but he was walking down the street and somebody threatened him, and he just nonchalantly said, I don't need your services. And certainly he was very strong in that, and we're going to miss him. Is it possible that you or any family is going to go into politics? No, not me. <laughs> that's not... Uh, I didn't get a yeah. sense that your son Ken was going to get involved, too. Oh, I don't know. That's his decision, that's but his decision. I uh, am not planning to. I think one in the, fa the family was fine. 
Anyway, thank you, and, thank you. and again, we're glad that we're able to pay tribute today to your late husband and to your family for what they've done for our country and for the strong Israel-American relationship. Thank you so much. It's really an honor. Our next speaker has been a great friend to the Jewish people from his time as a young boy growing up in Crown Heights throughout his political and professional journey. I look forward to Bill Thompson playing a leadership role in the years ahead and to the community enjoying many more years of his friendship and support. It is my honor and privilege to call the next speaker my friend, our friend, Bill Thompson. Jonah, let me thank you so much, my friend, for that incredibly kind introduction. Let me start out by also thanking our chairman, Robert Rechnitz. Thank you for bringing us together. Jonah mentioned I was in Israel in 2002, in the middle of the Intifada. The thing that I came away with then, the strength of the people of Israel. But we're also paying tribute to Iron Dome. And if you haven't spent any time in Stay Road when the Red Alert rocket comes, I have. You got 15 seconds, if that, to sh take shelter. It's a great pleasure for me to join in the tribute to Senator Inouye, to join with so many of uh, uh, my friends in Congress. And uh, let's make, let's try to commit not only to strengthening this relationship, but let's not make support for the State of Israel the last bipartisan <laughs> relationship in this United States. We continent. have seen in Iron Dome a superb uh, coping with the strategic and tactical realities of ballistic missiles. Inventive and successful coping, 95 percent of targets shot down and most remarkably avoiding wasting defensive missiles at the targets that are not going, the incoming warheads that are not going to hit anywhere particularly sensitive. Uh, it is a uh, strong indicator that Israeli technology, and I'm glad to see the United States has had a hand and has been able to help also with the funding, um, is something that truly can cope with the very most difficult of circumstances. Iron Dome has done great things, save lives. I think we need more of these kinds of systems for all different kinds of Iron Dome only protects against a certain short-range missile. Well, and you had the scuds uh, fired uh, uh, by the Syrians into uh, Aleppo uh, uh, yesterday or two days ago. Uh, we are uh, seeing missiles now, as of yesterday, I think, uh, refired uh, again uh, in, into Israel. Uh, we uh, the. Iranians and Syrians and Hezbollah uh, and Hamas have stockpiled different types of missiles of different size and uh, bless Israel for pursuing uh, Iron Dome and other defenses and I'm glad our government and military uh, uh, the defense department and uh, some of our companies were able to help but this is a really principally an Israeli technological and strategic uh, uh, triumph and it's it's great we we need them pretty much every year or two it's gonna help the United States it's gonna help the whole free yes. world as well before I let you go do you miss not being in the CIA anymore well I was out there for two years I was in the US government for 12 and uh, five different jobs and I uh, I enjoyed uh, all of my a time in the in the government, but I'm now in venture capital, investing in uh, renewable and natural gas energy, and uh, uh, really enjoying it. And uh, uh, for now, that's uh, that's fine. Look forward to having you back. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We're going to be right back with our very special broadcast, originating from the Iron Dome Congressional Tribute on Capitol Hill. Right after these messages, stay tuned. Do you take prescription medications? Are you spending money for them every month? Do you want them for free? Call the free prescription hotline to qualify for free brand name prescriptions and medical supplies. If you are insured, uninsured, or a Medicare beneficiary, your brand name prescriptions could be free. Call the free prescription hotline to see if you're eligible for the new programs and receive your brand name medications free. Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Buckwald, Medical Director of the Free Prescription Hotline. We can now offer the 2010 expanded programs for free prescription medications. So many people do not take advantage of the benefits they're entitled to because they don't call. When you call the free prescription hotline, you'll find out if your medications and medical supplies could be free. Call now. All callers will receive a free prescription savings card. Don't miss the deadline. Call the free prescription hotline now. Call 1-800-603-7920. That's 1-800-603-7920.
If you've ever considered hosting your own radio or TV show, then we can help you. Talkline Communications works with individuals and groups interested in broadcasting on radio and TV. Ideal for lawyers, doctors, financial advisors, organizations, or anyone interested in broadcasting. Talkline works with various TV and radio stations in New York and around the country that lease airtime at competitive rates so we can pass on that savings to you. For more information, call us at 212-769-1925. That's 212-769-1925. Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner coming to you from the Iron Dome Congressional Tribute on Capitol Hill. It is a great statement about this country, the United States, when an American Christian like Dan Inouye is succeeded by an American Jew named Brian Schatz. It is an honor to introduce to you Senator from Hawaii, Brian Schatz, as they say in Hawaii, Shaloa. My commitment to Israeli security is firmly grounded in public policy and the interests of Israel and the interests of the United States, but it is also a personal one. With the sequester looming and deep defense cuts coming, Congress must act. My colleagues must come together once again and protect funding for critical programs such as this. Iron Dome clearly has been a game changer, but it's not a game ender. And we will only end this when Israel's security is totally without question. Iron Dome conveys a sense of security. It makes you feel safe. Now, we in the US understand the importance of this sense of security. We're surrounded by two oceans. We have mostly friendly neighbors to the north and the south. And we've had this sense of security. It's so seared in our memory that the two dates where that security has been pierced are collectively in our consciousness forever. Uh, obviously, I'm talking about December 7th and September 11th. Now, Israel does not have the same geographical blessings in that sense that, that we have. And as, as the ambassador said, Israel has been subjected to, literally millions of Israeli citizens have been subjected to the threat of missile attacks. This is why Iron Dome is so important. Some of us have such a deep emotional connection to Israel. And I just want to remind you all that when the Holocaust occurred, many people wondered how the Jews would get revenge. But the way they got revenge is they dried their tears, they looked up, and they began to build again. And they built a nation, and they built a community, and they built a story that all of humanity should be able to hear. And today, the Nazis are gone, and Israel remains. And tomorrow, Jihad will be gone, and Israel will always remain. It is my great honor to introduce Congressman Joe Kennedy. To be able to take, then, an opportunity to go down to Starot, like so many others who have spoken here today have mentioned. I will never forget pulling in uh, to the city entrance. It was a rainy day. And we passed a bus stop that looks rather funny. And I pointed it out to my guide, and I said, what's that? And he mentioned that every bus stop had to be built of three feet thick of reinforced concrete to double as a bomb shelter. Our first stop was the police station. And they walked me through and took me out back. And I saw a wall of row after row after row of missiles that had started from basically pipe bombs with welded on wings to retractable wing military grade rockets. And to have that moment and to realize then to put in context the briefing that I had that morning from a former Mossad officer who laid out a map and showed the threats of rockets from Hezbollah in the north and Hamas just next door, to explain the true threat of Iran and what that poses to Israel, the United States, and the West. And I turned to her and I asked her, what do you do? If this were the United States, our society would not function. And she said, I'm going to my daughter's fourth birthday. It's this incredible message that life was going to be celebrated and lived and not controlled. That the resilience and the beauty of what makes life worthwhile are those small moments that will never be taken away because of your dedication and your belief in yourselves and in your community. And the only thing that you ask is for the right to exist. That's not too much to ask for. So to the extent that the Iron Dome provides some level of security, 
some ability for that belief to prosper, to flourish, and to be nurtured for a new generation. It is our obligation to support that in any way possible. I am so honored to be here with all of you today. I look forward to working with you in the years ahead. Thank you very, very much. Congressman and I go back many, many years in a number of ways. Uh, one is we were both born in the Bronx. Congressman decided to run for uh, Congress. I was introduced to him by a friend in Los Angeles, and we've been friends ever since. And today he is the minority ranking member on the Middle East Subcommittee of the Foreign Relations Committee. So with no more ado, <laughs> Congressman Engel. I can tell you that the one thing that you can gather from listening to all the speakers that we've had here, and if it's the one thing I can tell you that'll make everybody happy, its support in Congress for Israel is strong, and it's bipartisan. And that's the way it should be. We have arguments here in the Congress. They say we can't decide, agree on anything, not this a question, not anything else. But there's one thing on which we all agree, and that is support for Israel is very important. Israel is an important strategic ally, and the bond between the United States and Israel is strong and unbreakable. Very quickly, for, for Bobby Rechnis, um, you're a great defender of Israel. You're a great builder of Jerusalem. Um, you're a friend to the Jewish people worldwide. You're a great friend to our prime minister. And for all of that, uh, on the name, in the name of the state and the people and the government of Israel, we want to say toda, toda raba. Thank you so much. For that. That's for you. It is time today to remember that the defense of liberty and freedom in the United States and in Israel falls to every generation. It is time that everybody in this room, and I know you're committed or you would not be here, but to spread the word because there are those who are not that committed. And Elliot said it best when he said, there is bipartisan support in behalf of Israel and knowing full well the challenges that Israel faces from various terrorist groups and from Iran, and knowing that it's a little murky out there in regards to our commitment uh, with Israel. It's pretty damn simple. I'm just a cowboy from Dodge City, Kansas, all right? The basic truth is Israel has the right to exist, and that must be defended at each and every time and every way that we possibly can. Senator Joe Donnelly, who uh, in the House was a co-sponsor of the Iron Dome Support Act. I was proud to be part of making sure that Iron Dome could be in place and be effective. And then I went to Israel for the first time last year and stood on the Lebanese border with the IDF as I looked down into a beautiful town in Lebanon and children were running around. Remember the, and the member of the IDF said, that house there, it looked like your house and mine, said there are rockets in that basement. That house there, that is a safe house for terrorists. And he goes, that is what our families face every day. Well, my commitment to you is that we will stand together. We will work together. And we will make sure that every child in Israel and every child in America has the opportunity to have a childhood and a future lived in peace and prosperity. God bless you. Thank you for letting me be here with you today. We have with us here a representative who embodies menschlichkeit. What is menschlichkeit? Respect for others, patience, perseverance. And I've noticed that in our next speaker, Representative Salman. There have been a lot of wonderful things uh, said today. I want to be the first to uh, uh, issue my uh, strong respect for uh, Senator Inouye and the wonderful things uh, that he did, not just for Israel, but he was a true statesman in every way. Uh, that's what we all aspire to be. America is basically buying a base in the Middle East. For the money that they give, they have a base in the Middle East that, God forbid, they should ever need it. It's there, it's manned, and it's ready to move, and it's ready for action. And uh, Senator Inouye <clears throat> talked about the fact 
that he, he thought we should respect the rights of the minority in the Senate because he was a minority. He was um, the first Japanese American ever elected to the House, the first Japanese American ever elected to the Senate. And he also, I think during those early days, was the only senator who was missing an arm uh, during those times because of his great service to our country. And you have to remember that Hawaii was a territory, not a state. It was a territory back when he uh, served so courageously in the U.S. Army and, and did his service in Italy and in the European theater. But um, anyway, he was, a, he was a great statesman. He was a great friend to Israel. I've, all, I've often wondered if the reason uh, he felt so strongly about Israel might be related to the fact that because he knew what it was like to be in the minority, and he knows Israel's in the minority in that area, and he knows what it's like to have all the odds against you, and I just wonder if he related to Israel on that level. I, I wish he was here today. We could talk to him about it. This conference is to give Hakarat Tov, to give thanks to the United States. But I think we have to give thanks not only for the Iron Dome. Look around here. Senators, congresspersons, ambassadors, the hallways were flooded with interviews. More senators showed up than we even expected. Everybody wanted a chance to express their support and to voice their total appreciation to the Jewish community and to reassure us that they're here to support us. The wonderful tributes to Senator Nduye, who for some reason that wasn't mentioned, when he came back from the war, he wanted to convert to Judaism. Um, he stuck with his religion, but he was a better Jew than many Jews uh, that we know, of course. We've just finished the holiday of Purim, and the Talmud teaches us that Esther was afraid that the Jews would be lulled into complacency, thinking to themselves, we have connections, we have somebody in the palace, we Jews are protected. And we Jews in America, we often take things for granted because we think America is the safest country in the world for Jews. It is, and it always will be as long as we're a part of the system and we use the democratic process to have our voice heard. But I must tell you that relying on Jewish leadership and Jewish organizations who have connections in government and in Washington alone doesn't guarantee our safety, doesn't guarantee our future in this country. Everybody needs to take a role. Everybody needs to use the democratic system. If you're opposed to someone in office, speak out, speak often, and speak respectfully. We don't have to be silenced feeling that our leaders are taking care of it. We have to take care of ourselves, each and every one of us. Everyone's opinion matters. I think today was a Kiddush Hashem. I think it was a sanctification of God's name in the fact that we are here in the Senate in the United States of America. Many of us are going now on to the White House. Had this been the late 30s and 40s, imagine how many millions of lives could have been saved. God bless you all. Thank you for attending. We appreciate it. We hope you've enjoyed our very special broadcast, the Iron Dome Congressional Tribute taking place in the Kennedy Caucus Room in Capitol Hill. Join us again next week, same time, same station here on the TalkLine Communications Network. I'm Zev Brenner. Shalom.